Fox is uh, a digital ad content producer. Did advertising yeah. content, the sort of stuff we put on Sky. And Mighty Hive is an ad programmatic data media ads. planning yeah. and buying company. So the two things fit. We're driven by data, first party data, so consumer data, first party data we can lay our, lay our hands on, and that drives or fuels the digital content and the digital media planning about. So what are the gaps in your portfolio? What are you looking to buy? Well, uh, I'd, lo I'd love to have some first party data assets, that's uh, consumer information. Uh, but I think the, the two legs that we have in content and programmatic are the base of the business. So we have the building blocks in place. As I said, I'd like to add data at it, but we're doing, we will be doing two infill, unf unfair to call them infill because they're actually important in their own way. First in Latin America in pro programmatic and secondly in digital content, in, again in Holland, uh, around Media Monks, which is based in Amsterdam, which is a, a burgeoning city in this era, era of Brexit or non-Brexit. So the key thing about what you've just said, though, is that this is all exclusively digital. Is that going to be the yes. way that stays P from now on? Purely digital, a unitary structure, faster, better, cheaper. Uh, that's, those are the basic principles around it, with first-party data driving content and media. So we're in the sweet spot of the industry. The, the, the digital part of the industry was about 200 billion of, of volume out of a trillion, if you call it, with the old stuff and the new stuff, or 500 billion of the old stuff. So roughly 40% share of advertising is now in digital. Uh, and if you look at advertising and marketing services, is about 20%. Big clients are spending about 20, 40% of their budget on digital. So we're in the sweet spot, and it's growing at 20% a year, whereas the industry as a whole is only growing at 3 or 4%. But does that mean that traditional advertising is dead? I mean, there's a column in the Telegraph this morning Not that dead. says this is the year that traditional commercial television advertising goes into terminal decline. Well, I don't know about terminal decline. I don't know whether the problem is as big as it was with newspapers or, or analogue newspapers, but certainly free to air television, network television, is under pressure. We're seeing degradation audiences on both sides of the Atlantic of about two or three percent a year. So it's not as bad as newspapers, but it is there. Now, screen time, ironically, has grown. You know, I think about six hours a day, average users in America are using screens. So it depends how you de define TV. If you define TV as free to air or network, you're, you're seeing not terminal decline, but you're seeing compression. If you define screen time as including digital and everything digital, growing and growing quite ra rapidly. So in our own case, mobile viewing of advertising and programming is you know, growing violently, along with data, which is growing violently in terms of what we can capture. So these areas are very big growth areas for us. Now, in your maiden results, you've yes. uh, just published a pre-tax loss of £9.1 million. Pounds. Yeah, that's... When, that, when yeah, will you be profitable Well, we measure? were profitable last year, and you're being extremely unfair, a bit like the FT. Um, no, well, if you look at it on a pro forma basis, because we acquired Media Monks in July, and we acquired um, Mighty Hive, or combined with Mighty Hive, on Christmas Eve. If you pro forma the results, revenues were up by 50%. Uh, actually 60% at the revenue line and 50% at the gross profit line, and our profits doubled. Uh, and in earnings per share terms, again, if you pro forma for the year, up about three times. So, uh, you know, we're very pleased with the progress and very strong, and it's a very, from, from little acorns, uh, oak trees grow, or from, from peanuts, we get to coconuts and coco de mer, which are double, <laughs> double barreled uh, <laughs> coconut. So, a good start, but we have a long way to go. Now, you're off to Advertising Week Europe to speak yes. shortly afterwards. And Indeed. <laughs> your, your, your successor, Mark Reed, yes. uh, appeared at the event yesterday right. and said that WPP had got too complex. I mean, he's, he's killed off some very well-known advertising brand names. Well, you know, you know, it's sort of, what is it, simplicity is the hobgoblin of small minds or something like that? Um, I'm not so sure that complexity is necessarily a bad thing. I mean, organisational neatness, management by spreadsheet, I don't actually agree with and the issue is a very interesting point there are four major holding companies you know put Dentsu and Havas to one side for a minute two of them are based in the US and two of them are based in Europe why are the US companies doing well relatively well and why are the European based ones doing having a tough time I think it's because the the European ones have consolidated their brands too far so made it simpler but when you add one and one together as you well know or you may find out uh, one and one doesn't necessarily equal two. It might equal one and a half. It might equal one. It might equal actually less than one. So simplicity in and of itself may not be 
the solution. It may be that, you know, it's better to be a little bit messy. The, the companies in America, the two American companies, are investing in their brands and building their brands. So I think short term, they do better. Longer term, you know, maybe simplifying the structure is long term better, but there's a period of dislocation which is quite heavy. All right, so Martin.